Hi, and welcome to Family Recipe. My name's Anne, and today we're making a quick and easy chicken curry soup. Today's recipe is a combination of my mom's chicken curry and the Pioneer Woman's Mulligatawny soup. It's not an authentic Indian curry by any means. It's actually more of a retro American dish. My grandmother used to make this when her husband was in the Navy um, to entertain all the other military families and she passed the recipe on to my mom who made it for me. I loved eating chicken curry when I was a kid because my mom had this huge Lazy Susan which is like a rotating tray and she would put all kinds of delicious toppings on it to put on our chicken curry. So we're going to combine those two recipes today and it's going to be delicious. I have one onion, two cloves of garlic, three carrots. They were kind of skinny so I chose three. Um, usually I use two big ones and then one apple. This is just a gala apple um, or you can use a green apple which is nice because it has a little bit of a tartness to it. I'm going to chop all of this up so that we're ready to get cooking. I'm starting with two tablespoons of butter that I melted in my Dutch oven, which is over about medium high heat. To that, I'm adding one large boneless skinless chicken breast that I diced up into small pieces. You can also make this a vegetarian meal by omitting the chicken and using a head of cauliflower and maybe some chickpeas instead. And you can just add that in with all the other vegetables that we're gonna cook in a minute. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to the chicken too, just for a layer of flavor. The chicken's cooked through, so I'm just using a slotted spoon to remove it. And we'll keep the heat on in the pan and add a little more fat. So you can add a couple of tablespoons more of butter, or today I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and then we'll cook all our veggies. I'm sauteing the carrots, onions, and garlic for a few minutes until they start to soften. The apples will go in closer to the end of the cooking process because we don't want them to turn to mush. I like to season every layer as I go, so I sprinkled in a little salt and pepper to the veggies that are sauteing. And the next step is to add a quarter cup of flour, and this is gonna act as our thickening agent. So we'll pour that in and stir it around and let it cook just for about a minute to get the raw flour taste out. The next thing I'm gonna add is a heaping tablespoon of curry powder. Just be careful because every brand's a little bit different. Curry powder is a mix of a bunch of different spices. So this one has coriander, turmeric, cardamom, cinnamon, clove. It's a little bit warm and earthy, but also sweet too. It's a great flavor. But this also has cayenne pepper in it. So just be careful. My kids love this dish, but you don't wanna make it too spicy. So I let the curry powder cook for another minute and that makes it very fragrant and kind of toast the spice a little bit. The next thing we're adding is a 32 ounce container of low sodium chicken stock. I have made this before with just water because I forgot to buy my chicken stock that day and it turned out almost exactly the same. It was great. And also, again, if you're doing a vegetarian option, you could substitute water or vegetable stock. So this is four cups, 32 ounces, and we're gonna bring that to a boil. So our liquid is simmering, and you can see that the flour has made it thicken up a little bit. And to make it even thicker and creamier, we're gonna add in two cups of milk. The Pioneer Woman recipe uses half and half, which is quite decadent. I typically only use that when I'm making this for somebody else. Um, and I always have milk on hand in the fridge, so that's why I use that, it's an easy go-to. My mom's recipe is a little less liquidy than this, hers just uses one cup of milk and one cup of broth. So it's almost more like a saucy casserole, but I really like um, having a soup. After the milk goes another teaspoon or so of salt, some more pepper, just black pepper. You can add cayenne too if you want a little more heat. And then 
I'm also gonna add a big tablespoon of brown sugar. And stir it all together. So the soup has to come to a simmer again. Then we'll add in the chicken and the apples and let it cook for another five or 10 minutes. Then it'll be ready. I served up the chicken curry soup over a bed of rice, and I wanted to show you some of the toppings that my family loves. We have some chopped cherry tomatoes, I have a little dish of peanuts and chopped cashews, some raisins, and some unsweetened coconut flakes. Other things my mom liked to add were chopped up green bell peppers, chopped up pineapples, and even hard boiled egg. My whole family is so excited for dinner tonight. This is one of our favorites. I'm gonna take all of these tasty toppings to the table so we can customize our bowls of chicken curry soup. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen for another family recipe. See you again soon. For the full recipe, check the description box below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen.